It's hard to find a teenager who doesn't think the internet is a lot of fun, but very few think about how dangerous it can be too. Because of that, there are plenty of stories about young people being taken advantage of on the internet, and the average teen might even know someone who had a bad experience. This is a serious problem in today's world, and teaching children to be on their guard when it comes to the net is the only defense. People who use the internet to take advantage of young people are called online predators. It's very difficult, especially for a trusting teen, to tell over the internet what a person is like. And with fake pictures and false information, it's all too easy for predators to misrepresent themselves to unsuspecting kids. A big part of protecting teens from predators is knowing what the red flags are. To test yourself. Take a look at this chat and see if you can spot what's wrong. Click next to go on when you're done. Online predators meet teens by prowling chat rooms and social networking sites like Facebook and MySpace. They may also use email and instant messenger programs to contact young people, posing as teens themselves. Basically, they use the mediums most attractive to kids in order to find and harm them. Warn teens to be wary of anyone they meet online who won't reveal his or her age. Whose information doesn't seem plausible, or who offers gifts or money to the child, it's important for young people to remember that predators might ask for inappropriate photos or tell the child to lie to his or her parents. All of this is because the predator eventually plans to ask to meet in person, where he can do real damage to the child. Think about some warning signs of online predators by taking a look at this question before we go on. When you're done, click next. So, how do these dangerous people contact teens? Remember that even with very little information about a person, the internet makes it easy to find phone numbers, addresses, and other personal information. Once a predator knows the child's last name or the school he or she attends, it's possible to find out the parents' names, a home address, and all sorts of private information. Another way to protect teens is to make sure they keep their profiles private on social networking sites. And that they only add friends from real life. And if the child does go into a chat room, be sure they stick to public ones like those hosted by AOL Instant Messenger or Skype. With these, the teen can report anyone who makes him or her feel uncomfortable. And if someone breaks the chat room rules, he or she is banned for good. No one should ever make a child feel uncomfortable on the internet. And if anyone does, the teen can always block that person and refuse to respond to their messages. If it's severe enough, be sure the child knows to tell a trusted adult, one he or she knows in real life, right away. Let's think about how to help teens avoid online predators by looking at this question. When you're done, click next to keep going. Online predators use a process called grooming to find their victims. 
The predator will first spend a long time building up trust by being friendly or charming and acting like he can be trusted. He'll then say that he thinks the child is pretty, ask what he or she likes to do, or ask where the teen likes to go. Anything he can use to make the child feel like he cares. The predator makes his victim feel like no one understands the teen as well as he does. And once the predator has built up a relationship of trust, generally by flattering and praising his victim, he'll finally ask to meet the child in person. If that happens, the teen will be in serious danger of being physically taken advantage of by the older, stronger predator. Let's review the grooming process with this question. Click Next to finish the lesson when you're done. Tell teens in no uncertain terms that a predator's ultimate goal is sex, no matter what he tells the child. Unless young people understand how serious the danger is, they are liable to be fooled by flattery, praise, or the offer of gifts and money. Only if children are aware of what is really going on will they be able to guard themselves from the superficially tempting offers of a predator. Always make children feel safe in confiding in a trusted adult if they are being pursued online. And if the child needs immediate help, he or she can always call the police right away. It just might be the difference between safety and life-threatening danger. Here are some real-life examples of how the concepts discussed in this lesson could be used in a classroom, either as a teaching tool or an administrative aid. 